Persona 5, my game of the year, and I can say that with no hesitation because I love this game so much. I still play it. Uh, I'm not going to throw that. I was going to throw it, but that's probably a terrible idea. Knowing my luck, it would break. Oh, hi, kitty. Aren't you tired? Uh... You should go to bed now. I gotta pee, though. Also, warning. This is the first Persona game that I've ever played. I mean, I've played three hours of three, but that doesn't really count. So, this is my full experience. If you like another game better, I understand that, but I mean, this is just a fun game to me. Oh, and like, minor spoilers that are like in the beginning of the game, like the first palace, so... Yeah, that's about it. The game starts you off in a big epic moment. You have people talking to you that you have no idea who they are, and you get a tutorial in a sense. Instead of letting you learn the basics slowly throughout the game, it's like, ah, here you go, have fun, champ. I mean, not not everything. It just teaches you the basics. Like, you'll there's a lot to learn. You get the idea. The intro also gives incentive in a way because it's like, who are these people that are talking to me? What's with my sexy outfit? Who is that bull caterpillar? Thing. Oh hey, the Dark Magician. And ultimately, it ends up with you getting the snot kicked out of you. And it has one of the best name your character sequences I've ever seen. It's a little thing, but it was super clever. Then you end up getting interrogated by Bay. I mean, Sai. They're close enough. And then you get a flashback to how it all started. Typically, I really hate whenever movies or games start off like this, and then you have to go back in time and figure out how everything happened. I really don't like that, and it bugged me at first, but I ended up getting over it. It's just a personal preference that I don't like those type of things. But in this game, I didn't really mind it as much. So your character, who I named after me because I really want his life, tried to save some chick from a drunk guy who's trying to assault her. You get arrested, expelled, and now you live with this guy, Sojuro who pretty much hates you. Don't worry, he gets better. One thing people may not like with this game is the build-up. The first about eight hours feels a little slow and could lose some people, but you're supposed to take your time in a game like this. For crying out loud, I'm in New Game Plus and I put 150 hours into this game and I'm still not done with the second playthrough. That's not a bad thing though, there's a lot of stuff to do, but at the same time, it's gonna be very time consuming. But I think that's why the intro of this game really works. You know the gameplay that's gonna come, and I think that's what keeps players invested. Heck, that's a big reason why I continued, and now I'm here like, This game is my baby, and I'll protect it with my life, and I will STAB SOMEONE IF I HAVE TO! Carl, that kills people! Alright, time to dive into the pieces that makes this game so good! The style. I really dig the black and red aesthetics that flows throughout the game. It also has a comic book feel to it when it comes to the graphics, and that's such a nice touch to me. I love that Wind Waker did it. It's something I wish more games did. The outfits work nicely. Well, mostly. To be fair. Black and red theme really fits. Many characters you end up meeting, including yourself, have very troubling past or history. You even walk in on some. These are sometimes really, really dark, but they're believable. It's not like, oh, he's so sad because his mom threw away his Pop-Tart, which I mean, I would be too, but that's not the point right now. There's a lot of moments where it's like, wow, I can't believe that they would cover this up, and it shows the aspects of corruption that we even see in our world today. See, red is supposed to represent freedom and rebellion, a theme that goes throughout the entire game and it doesn't hold any punches. One of the most impactful things in this game happens right in the beginning when you're first starting off your journey as a Phantom Thief. Morgana tells you that there's a chance when you go to steal these people's distorted hearts slash treasures, they could end up dying. And like, yeah, Kamoshida is a jerk, but you still sit there and you're like, would I be able to sleep at night if I end up killing this guy by accident? Is it something I want to risk? I don't even know. But what ends up happening is you have this girl try to commit suicide because she couldn't break free of the cycle that Kamoshida was doing. And it's heavily implied that Kamoshida sexually assaulted her. And right then and there, I was with Ryuji, like, I just want to break his face. He showed zero remorse, and at that point, I was like, I am willing to take this risk. I don't care if you die or not. I am changing you because you don't care if this girl died or not. I will personally stop this from happening to another student. And there's quite a few impactful moments like that throughout this game. Every character in this game is super relatable and likable. This is one of the few games where I genuinely like every single player you got to know over time. Okay, but let's let's change the tone of this video right now because we got to talk about something really important. Best girl. Okay, so a lot of people say Makoto, and it works with the story, whatever, you can choose that, but here's my biggest issue, you can't get Psy. You can get with some fortune teller, journalist, a doctor, you can even date your thought of a teacher, but no, apparently Psy isn't allowed, why, I don't know, that's stupid. But in all honesty, On is my favorite. She's just a sweet girl who, yeah, is an airhead at times, but she's freaking adorable and just, oh my god, I love her. Good, you can yell at me for it, I don't care, she's best girl to me. She is Bay. I will protect her with my life, and dang it, I have a wife who, oh my god, what has happened to me? A 
best thing about this game is the characters. They're all so memorable and fantastically written, and there's so much character development, but not in the way you typically think. Sometimes, characters don't develop, and that's okay because there's a realism to that. In Persona 5, some stay the same path but learn to cope better. Some make little advancements, but not huge ones. Some stay the same, and some develop fully. I think that's why I like the characters in this game so much. It feels so real to me. The reason why it feels so real is because you can look inside yourself and say, hey, I do have these flaws, but I can cope better. I can take the necessary steps to be who I am as a person, but overcome these obstacles. That's why it's real, because we ourselves can do that. Plus, while playing this game, I'm like, oh my god, I'm Ryuji. Except not as angry, thankfully. Not only that, but the cast is a bunch of people that feel like they don't really belong, and that sticks throughout the game the entire time. No one ever really throws you a parade or thinks you're amazing. You never get the recognition you feel like you deserve. You're always in the background. And that goes for many of these characters. Outcasts. Overlooked individuals. And it resonates with me because, well, that's how high school was for me. I just hated high school. It was never really someone who stuck out. People knew of me, but not for the right reasons. We'll get into that another day. Just. It's a long story. But, since then, life has become so much better for me and I actually fully developed into somebody that I can be proud of. And that's another thing that this game portrays. Growth and confidence. Not only with yourself, but growing in others. I am literally over here gushing about a game that has a penis chariot as a character. It's a really good game and it's probably made its way into my top 10, top 15 of all time. One day I'll make that video. One day I'll make that list, but not today. We're gonna give it time. Just give it time. Give me time. Give me time. The praise I'm giving this game is really well deserved. They left out a ton of stuff too. That's the weirdest part. Like there's cut out ideas, cut out party members. I mean, they changed up members so they could meet the deadline for crying out loud. So I'm just gonna sit here and wait for a re-release like they did with Persona 4 Gold. Persona 5 Crimson, I'm waiting on you, even though they're probably not gonna call it that. But still, waiting on you. Again, really, I can't like call a teacher to give me a massage so I don't have to do this anymore. Oh, Ow. thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.